Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. I hope you're doing well. This is episode one of the Coastal Landscape and Change series over here on my channel. This is going to be going through the entire specification and then at the end I'm going to do a full roundup, just like a one hour revision just of coasts for you. Today we're going to be looking at coastal landscapes and systems and I hope it's useful for you. Please do subscribe down below if it is. I've already done the tectonic processes and hazards unit the Glaciated Landscape and Change Unit and the Globalisation Unit. So they're in playlists on my channel, go find them if you think you'll find them useful. I'm doing this because it's exactly what I wanted during my A-levels. I upload these every week, Monday at 4.30pm. So I hope you enjoy, I hope you find it useful. Please do share with like a classmate or a teacher or someone who you think might find it useful. And yeah, I'll just get straight on into it because we've got 12 episodes. 13 if you cast the last one too to get through so let's get straight on into it how coastal landscapes vary the uk's coastline is an incredible 31,368 kilometers long if you include all the uk main islands it varies enormously from tropical looking lusk and tyre in the outer hebrides to the jagged rock of the coastline of Cornwall, from low-lying muddy estuaries of the Wash to the broady sand beach and dunes at Bambra in Northumberland. The role of geology. Resistant rock coastlines. As the UK's most southwesterly peninsula, Cornwall bears the brunt of the worst of the weather rolling in from the Atlantic Ocean. Due to its geology, Cornwall's rocky coastline can actually withstand frequent winter storms without suffering from rapid erosion. Like the rest of Britain, much of Cornwall consists of older resistant rocks, including igneous rocks such as basalt and granite, older compacted sedimentary rocks such as old red sandstone, metamorphic rocks such as slates and cysts. These rocks are all resistant to the erosive power of the sea, wind and rain. Coastal plain landscapes. In comparison with Western and Northern Britain, Eastern and southern coasts consist of areas of weaker and younger sedimentary rocks, including chalks, clays and sandstone. The wash is an area of low, flat relief, referred to as a coastal plain. At 20 kilometres wide and 30 kilometres long, the wash is the largest estuary system in the UK, formed by the four rivers, the Great Oars, Whitham, Welland and Neen with a range of habitats from tidal creeks to mud flats, salt marshes and lagoons. However, much of the coast of eastern England consists of low-lying sandy beaches, such as Bamburgh Beach in Northumberland and the holiday resorts on the Lincolnshire and Norfolk coasts. In reality, many coasts are a mixture of high and low energy environments. For example, while some coasts may be predominantly low energy, such as Holderness in the East Riding of Yorkshire, Winter storms can still create short-term, high-energy erosional environments and local geology can also create headlands, such as the chalky cliffs at Flamborough Head. Similarly, estuaries in Western Britain, such as the Camel Estuary in Cornwall, can still form if they're sheltered from the power of the worst of the Atlantic waves. High-energy coastline. Rocky coasts are generally found in high-energy environments. In the UK, these tend to be stretches of the Atlantic facing coast, where the waves are powerful for much of the year, such as Cornwall or northwestern Scotland, and where the rate of erosion exceeds the rate of deposition. Erosional landforms such as headlands, cliffs, and shoreline platforms, sometimes referred to as wave cut platforms, even though they're actually not, also tend to be found in these environments. Low energy coastlines, therefore, are usually sandy and estuarine coasts. These are typical of low energy environments. In the UK, these tend to be stretches of the coast where the waves are less powerful or where the coast is sheltered from large waves, such as Lincolnshire and Northumberland. It's also an area where the rate of deposition exceeds the rate of erosion. Landforms are present such as beaches, spits and coastal plains tend to be found in these environments. The coasts as a system. 
Because the coast is constantly changing, it helps us to think as a system driven by wave energy. Each component of the coastal system, the inputs, processes and outputs, are linked. Any change to any particular component, whether caused naturally or by human intervention, then impacts the rest of the system. So your inputs are your marine inputs, such as waves, tides, storm surges. You've got your atmospheric inputs, which are your weather and climate, climate change, solar energy, that kind of thing. You've got your land inputs, such as rock type and structure, as well as tectonic activity. And then you've got your human inputs, such as human activity and coastal management systems. The processes then are your weathering, your mass movement, erosion, transport and deposition. Similarly, outputs are your erosional landforms, depositional landforms and different types of coasts. The littoral zone. In December 2015, a big rockfall on Dorset Beach attracted many fossil hunters. Over 100 metres of cliff fell onto the beach at Charmouth, exposing fresh blocks of mud and shale that were full of Dorset's famous fossils. Rockfalls like this are actually common on Dorset's coast. They occur in the littoral or coastal zone, the boundary between the land and the sea. The littoral zone stretches out into the sea and onto the shore. It's a zone rather than a line because tides and storms affect the band around the coast. The zone is constantly changing because of the dynamic interaction between the processes operating in the seas, oceans and on land. It varies because of short-term factors, such as individual waves, daily tides and seasonal storms. And it also varies due to long-term factors, such as changes to sea levels or climate change. The littoral zone is divided into different sections. The backshore and the foreshore are the sections that concern us most. They are the areas where greatest human activity occurs, and where the physical processes of erosion, deposition, transport and mass movement largely operate. Sediment supply. The processes of weather and erosion produce output in the form of sediment, which is then transported and deposited to produce coastal landforms. The sources of sediment are complex. In the wash, the sediment originates from different places. The main source is from the cliffs, eroding between West Runton and Weybourne, east of the wash, along the Norfolk coast. These cliffs have retreated at about one metre per year for thousands of years. Because they're sandstone, 60% of sediment consists of sand. Some sediment also comes from tidal currents, which pick up glacial deposits from shallow seafloor. The erosion of the Holderness coast further up north also provides some sediment, which is carried southwards in suspension. Sand is carried southwards along the Lincolnshire coast and four rivers also discharge into the wash bringing very fine sediment with them. The fact that the sediment comes from two different directions, from the north and the east, illustrates what is known as sediment cells. The Wash and the Norfolk coastline form one of 11 sediment cells around the English and Welsh coasts. Classifying coasts. Coasts can be classified based on their geology which create rocky, sandy and estuarine coasts, as well as concordant and discordant coasts. If you don't understand that, it's okay, we are gonna discuss it in a couple of weeks time. You can also classify coasts based on the level of energy, either high or low energy coastlines, which we touched on earlier. They can also be classified due to the balance between erosion and deposition, on which of them is the more dominant process, creating either erosional or depositional coasts and their associated features, as well as changes in sea level, either emergent or submergent coasts. But no classification system is definitive. So Cornwall, for example, it's a high energy coast. It's mainly rocky, but it also has some stretches of sand and some estuaries. Similarly, the low-lying coasts of eastern and southern England also have high cliffs, such at Beachy Head. And that is the end of the first episode of this coastal landscapes and change revision series. I hope you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed. Please do subscribe down below. Same one, same time next week. The second one will be uploaded. We are going to be looking at geology and the coast. So please do subscribe, share it with a friend, leave me a comment below and I will see you same time, same place 
next week, Monday, 4.30pm. Bye guys.